Hello, my name is Dan Brown. I'm an Applications Trainer with Imaging Sciences International. On behalf of all of us at Imaging Sciences, I would like to welcome you to this tutorial on Treatment Studio's 3D cephalometric tracing software. The objective of this training video is to cover the basic tools and functions for getting started with Treatment Studio 3D cephalometric tracing. Our agenda will include customizing tracing tasks, creating landmarks and drawing profiles, recording new view states, turning on and off landmarks, measurements, reference lines and planes, and saving, printing, and emailing your completed analysis. All right, if you're ready, let's go ahead and get started. When your case has been loaded into Treatment Studio, you may find that the patient was improperly set up when the scan was taken. There is no need to adjust the orientation as this will be done automatically as you move through the tracing task. Select the 3D Analysis tab, Then go to your toolbar and find the icon that looks like a gear and as you highlight or as you rest your pointer over the top of it, it'll give you a text description of that icon which is settings. You'll go ahead and left mouse click. Then we'll select the analyst tab and we'll select the analysis to use. If you do not see your analysis, please call Imaging Sciences customer support for assistance. We currently have more than 70 analysis that can be installed and then once selected and we will leave default and Steiner which is the default selected. We'll click OK. Next we want to select quality. This will further enhance the quality of the image. If you have a computer that may be older, not quite as, as high powered as, a, as some of the newer models might be, you might want to leave that deselected. Uh, your computer will fun your software will function just a little bit quicker but if you do have a newer computer just go ahead and click quality because the imaging will appear a little bit better. You can go ahead and adjust the brightness and the contrast as needed for better viewing. Select the slice locator and if selected let's go ahead and deselect the text view. Let's click create tracing. Within the tracing task window we have individual landmarks to be marked and profiles to be drawn. These landmarks and profiles may be changed depending upon the requirements of a particular analysis. Again, Treatment Studio's default analysis is Steiner. Let's take a look at how to custom the tracing task. First, let's click Setup. That will be at the bottom right of the window. And if you would like to remove any of the tasks shown, simply choose the task by left mouse clicking on it and choosing the right arrow. It will move the task to available tracing features. So let's go ahead and highlight Articulary Right, and you notice abbreviations here, uh, and they'll be like BA, Bayesian, Sela, Sela Tersica, N, Nasion. So Articulary Right, we'll go ahead and choose that and then use our right arrow, so left mouse click that, and it will ask, do you really want to delete this training task? And we're going to click yes. Now it doesn't completely remove it from the software, it will just remove it from the tracing list. The articulary right is the junction of the posterior ramus plane and the temporal bone of the skull. This landmark is not required when doing a Steiner analysis, which is presently the most common analysis used by orthodontists. However, you will need to mark the articulari if you are doing a Ricketts analysis, another common analysis. For the purpose of showing this landmark, let's move articulari back to the current tracing list. And how you do that is left mouse click to select. This time, rather than the right arrow, we'll choose the left arrow and place it back in our list. And let's go ahead and move it back up. We'll highlight it, and then we have an up and a down button. So we'll click on up and put it right underneath Bayesian. And then click close. 
Now instead of removing a task, let's add to our tracing list. Presently the Sassouni analysis is becoming very popular. If this analysis is to be used, additional landmarks are needed to supplement the, the basic tracing task list. So let's go ahead and click on Create Tracing again, and let's click Setup and let's choose from the alphabetized list of available tracing features. Let's go ahead and scroll down until we get to CL clinonile, which is the most superior point on the contour of the anterior clinoid. So we'll left mouse click and highlight that and then we'll click on the left arrow and now we can see it in our tracing list. Let's go ahead and select CR which is the cribriform plate, which is the deepest median point of the anterior cranial fossa corresponding to the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone. Then let's select EPL, which is the effective premaxillary length. Let's select RO, so we'll have to move down in our list. RO, roof of the orbit. Let's select SI now, the most inferior point of the Sulla Tersica. SN, the junction of the lower border of the nose and the beginning of the upper lip. And let's find capital S, capital O, and then lowercase r, which is the supraorbitale or the most superior point of the orbital rim. Now let's select the posterior point, the most posterior point of the select tersica, which is SP. And lastly, let's select TE, or temporarily, left mouse click to add it to the list. Next we would want to go to the settings tab on the toolbar again. So we'll, we'll go ahead and close this out, save, saving the new tracing task, then we'll click on our settings tab, click on analysis, and then we would want to deselect default Steiner and select Sassouni bottom line. But for our example again we're going to stay with Steiner and default so we'll go ahead and click OK on that. We'll go ahead and open tracing again, go to setup, and now let's remove those items that we have added. Okay, we'll go ahead and click Close. Next, let's select Create Tracing again. Click Start to begin the tracing process. And before we begin the tracing, let's take a look at the functions at the bottom of the Tracing Task window. We've seen Start already, and that will start the Tracing Task process. Click on Close to stop the current Tracing Task, and it closes the Tracing Task window. Stop stops the current tracing task and returns to the editing mode in the training task window. Setup, as we have seen, opens the tracing guide window and restart all completely discards the tracing task and restarts from the first tracing task. So if you feel like that you just, you know, you wanted to go ahead and start the whole tracing process again rather than going to each individual landmark or profile and redoing that, which you can just by double clicking. Then go ahead and hit the restart all. Now as you see, the volume has now been clipped to afford a better view state in which to create the selected landmark. You will also notice that there is now a crosshair to the left of the active task. When the task is completed, this crosshair will be replaced with a check mark. The default view was created with a particular scan when the software engineers designed this module. And depending on your scan, head positioning, anatomy, etc., you may have to adjust the view. This can be done by placing your mouse pointer outside of the anatomy and using Treatment Studio's navigation tools like Zoom, Pan, and Free Rotate. So let's go ahead and go outside of the anatomy, left mouse click, 
and we can hold it down and this is called free rotating and we can just rotate the skull the anatomy in a different position and to get it back to where we were before you can go ahead and click on either the front view okay and you can double click on over tally right or the training task and it'll go ahead and retilt the anatomy now let's say that we wanted this larger to better view the area that we need to place a point then hold down the control key left mouse button hold that down and while you're holding both of those down move your mouse up to enlarge or back to make smaller okay now if you move it up so far and you want to get it back down very quickly into the reset view then you can click on the little house on the toolbar and by hovering over you can see it labeled as reset view and just left mouse click that and then it will move back to the default state we can also too after we've enlarged it we may have an area that is no longer visible that may be outside of the viewing area or may be covered up we can hold down the shift button left mouse button and we can pan move the image around the screen we can also hold our spacebar down hold our left mouse button down and tilt the entire volume let's go ahead and proceed now with our tracing task in this instance we're starting at the very beginning which is the orbitally right and then you're going to go ahead and click a point on the lower most point of the orbit okay the lower rim so I'm gonna left mouse click now let's say that if you get that left mouse or the left click too far away from where you were at you saw that you did that you could come over here to the slices uh, to the uh, slice locator and you can move around there by clicking on the area that you would like or you can just double click on orbitally right it says this task has been traced but do you want to trace it again yes okay so it will reorient the anatomy and then we'll just go ahead and put the point where we want it to be now we've advanced to the next view which is the Orion right and you can see that it's covered up now we're seeing the condyle setting in the fossa so we need to go further back more posterior so I'm gonna go ahead and leave this enlarged but I'm just gonna click the shift and hold that down the left mouse button and we'll just pan out and I may want to tilt up just a little bit so I can better see where I would like to place my point and I'll go ahead and left mouse click the uppermost point of the porion and then I can go ahead and make adjustments on these slices which are represented by the top slice area which is the axial view looking up and through the slices of the anatomy the middle view which is the sagittal view or looking from the side and then the bottom is the coronal view looking straight ahead at the patient so that's an acceptable point where I've placed it so let's go ahead we now have the anterior nasal spine ANS which is the most anterior point of the maxilla and I'm going to go ahead and let's just go ahead and click on the reset view I might want to make this just a little bit larger so control hold that down left mouse button hold that down and push my mouse up here is our anterior nasal spines I'm going to we want to put it right at the apex right at the very most anterior spot so I'm going to left mouse click when I think that I've got it got it to there I have found that generally you're going to not be exactly where you need to be on this point so it's very helpful to go to the sagittal view and left mouse click at the most anterior point and you can go ahead and adjust that as many times you need to but place it right at the anterior point and then we're ready for the next the next position which is the cella and this is going to be the center of the constructed cella tersica on the mid sagittal plane and you just want to eyeball to center the geometric center and just left mouse click next we'll have the nasion pretty straightforward left mouse click there now we're going to be looking at the porion left now let's move to basion our next landmark point the basion is the lowest point on the anterior rim of the magnum foramen on the mid sagittal plane so looking at our cross-sectional view that's been offered to us by the software I can see that we've gone a little too far down in the anatomy we are down to the point where we're starting to see cervical spine so we need to move that up and how we would do that again is taking our mouse 
and taking our scroll wheel, this is the easiest way to do it, and just scroll up until we get to the point that we would like to place our next reference point. Now we can also move up and down through the slices by grabbing again the scroll bar here under clipping and we can move that forward and back and get to the point but it's just it's a it's a little more exacting to take the scroll wheel and do that now again whenever this particular clipping or model was made when the software was developed this module it was based on a scan for a certain patient so if you find that a particular view comes up the view state and it's not where you would generally like to have it then that can be changed let's go ahead as an example and let's change this right now for the for the Bayesian we want to stop the tracing task so we'll click stop and then we want to left mouse click on setup then click Bayesian and then we want to change or adjust the rendering window to a preferred view by adjusting the clipping plane we'll go ahead and adjust that to where we want I've already done that as we were looking at that but find an area that you feel comfortable in placing your landmark point we can also change the brightness to change the visibility to where it might be easier to see where to place the point once you're finished we want to select use current view settings and then we'll go ahead and click close and then the next time that you're tracing a patient this is the point that it, the clipping will be brought up into the view state that's been offered by the software so let's go ahead and click on create tracing let's double click Bayesian and let's go ahead and place our landmark the last individual landmark that we place will be the articulari right the articulari is the junction of the posterior ramus plane and the temporal bone of the skull so let's go ahead and make our image larger and we'll do that again by control left mouse click and you certainly don't have to do this but sometimes it helps with viewing and then because our our plane is away from our viewing area it's hidden right now so we'll go shift and left mouse and hold those both down and then pan our image to the right and our landmark is right here it's the junction from the posterior ramus uh, to the cranial base so we'll place our landmark point right there after the anterior nasal spine the nasia and the basion are marked stop tracing and we can turn on the view tab just to uh, give you an idea of what the text view looks like let's go ahead and click on stop and then click on text view and let's turn off slice locator so we are left on the right hand side our working analyses not completed yet but let's go ahead and turn or select the reference in the text area which is this area right up here so we'll click reference and turn on the mid sagittal plane we can click on the reference planes and if we we select the menu item it will open or turn on all the measurements underneath but let's just go ahead and we'll go back to the defaulted area okay and let's just select mid sagittal plane and frontal planes and I'm going to go ahead and choose my reset view and let's go ahead and use the frontal view we'll click on again the icon the positional icon in the toolbar and it shows the mid sagittal markers that we've uh, we've got the plane selected now and let's go ahead and select the right view and we can see the frontal plane has been marked for us so as we're making our points calculations are being done for us let's go ahead and deselect again our two planes that we turned on and we'll turn off the text view 
and turn back on the slice locator and then we'll click on create tracing Again, we haven't lost anything that we've done so far and we're going to go ahead and click on start and we're now at the left mandible profile the left mandible profile is the start of our profiles that we will be tracing your analysis that you use that you're using may or may not require that the coronoid process be part of the profile if not required you may wish to begin at the condyle the individual landmarks are now concluded and will begin the tracing of the profiles that outline the anatomy and creates automatic landmarks and we'll start with the left mandible profile this is a little small for me so what we'll do is we'll make it larger let's go ahead and again we'll control left mouse button and move it up but we have a problem now it does not make the image larger like it did before on the profiles you'll have to do it a little bit different way so what we will do is we'll click on stop to stop the tracing process and get into the editing mode then we'll do our control left mouse and move it forward and then we'll go ahead and click start and then we're ready to begin on our left mandible profile. Your analysis may or may not require that the coronary process be part of your profile. If not required, you may wish to begin at the condyle. As you begin drawing the condylar profile, you may find that it is difficult to see the borders. The condyle, as you know, has low bone density and is highly vascularized. To help viewing the condyle, you may need to adjust the brightness and the contrast. So let's go ahead and do that first. That affords us a little bit better view. Let's see if we can adjust the, con the contrast just a little bit. Let's try that right there. And when you get to the condyle, I suggest that you use the three-point method for greater accuracy. So that would be picking out the most posterior point, the most anterior point, and the most superior point of the condyle. Okay, so let's go ahead and place a point. We will go ahead and trace the coronary process. Now what we want to do first is to place a point at the most anterior aspect of the head of the condyle and then we're going to rely heavily on these three views to make sure we are where we need to be so again the top view is the axial view the middle view is the sagittal view and the bottom view is the coronal view in this first point the most interior aspect of the head of the condyle we'll want to hone in on the points through looking first at the sagittal view we'll use the sagittal and the axial those really are our best friends at this point so i'm going to left mouse click at a point that i believe is the most interior point of the condyle and indeed when i'm looking at the sagittal view that's right on the on the axial view that's pretty much right on so we can go ahead and move forward with our tracing or we can click on these points and to hone in just a little bit better uh, where we positioned our our points so let's go ahead and place a point at the most superior point of the condyle and we'll use the lateral or the sagittal view and the coronal view and again if we cannot see the image in clear enough detail to make our points we can use the brightness and the contrast at any point we're going to fine-tune the coronal view first. We're again looking at the most superior view. Okay, and once we're honed in, we'll go ahead and to the, move to the most posterior view. And we'll go back and use the axial and the sagittal views as we make our points. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now we're just going to go ahead and follow the ramus on down and we're going to end right below the mental foramen. So I'm going to just left mouse click as I follow along the ramus. Now, if I happen to place a point somewhere where I don't want to place a point, uh, it's very easy to delete that point and to go back to the last point that's been added. So I'm just going to click escape 
ESC on the keyboard and now we've removed that point and we can just go ahead and continue following our anatomy. And then right underneath the mental foramen we'll left mouse click and then right mouse click to stop. Now we're moved to our right mandible profile. So let's go ahead and adjust this one just as we did the other one. We might want to change the brightness and the contrast to get a better view. This time start at the congular head and so we'll pick out the most anterior point then we'll look for the most superior point and then we'll go most posterior And then we'll go ahead and follow the ramus horn down as we did on the left profile. Now we're going to trace the maxillary profile and the teeth filter will be turned on at that point and sometimes it's helpful to turn on grayscale. When you're tracing with the teeth filter on, uh, you're looking at predominantly higher density bone around the maxilla and with the grayscale turned on you can get a better view of the lower density areas and therefore generally get a fuller profile of the maxilla. Okay so let's go ahead and choose the grayscale and let's make this a little bit larger so to do that again we'd stop and then control hold that down left mouse button hold that down and push our mouse up let's go ahead and start again we're gonna to have to go back to grayscale we'll want to start at the beginning of the alveolar bone on the upper central incisor so we'll go ahead and make that first mark and again we can adjust that over in our lateral view and let's just go ahead and follow our maxillary profile around We'll click right on top of the ANS that was our individual landmark. And then some doctors will like to just go ahead and go straight across from this point. Some like to follow again at Orn up to the top. And we can take our scroll wheel and scroll to get a little fuller profile, a little bit better cut within the anatomy. Again, we're clipping within the midpoint of the anatomy. You can change the brightness and the contrast as we move through here if that's helpful. When we're at the posterior nasal spine, we'll turn and make our move back around. And then we want to stop again where the Alveolar bone connects with the tooth. And then right mouse click when we're finished. Next we'll do the symphysil profile. And we can go ahead and go back to grayscale. Okay, let's try that. Let's click on grayscale. And if you like that, then you can go ahead and use that, whatever helps you see the anatomy well. And after we've marked this profile. The software will automatically determine the location of the B point, the Pagonian, the Nathion, and the Menton. The profile will be projected onto the mid sagittal plane. So we're going to start at the beginning of the alveolar bone on the lower central incisor. And we're going to place points as we move around the bone. and then right mouse click when you're finished. Okay, next we're going to do the upper soft tissue profile. 
In this case, it's a 13 centimeter scan. Your machine, you may have taken a scan at a larger height, say 17 centimeters or maybe 11 centimeters lower, but at the uppermost part of the scan, usually around the eyebrows for a 13 centimeter scan, and place your points as you follow the outer border of the profile, and you want to end where the upper lip meets with the crown of the upper central incisor. To better view this, we can go ahead and Again, go back to our brightness and contrast if need be, or to use our scroll wheel to go through the slices, the lateral slices. Okay, when you get to the end, just right mouse click. And now we're ready for the lower soft tissue profile. And we'll start where the lower lip meets the crown of the upper central incisor. And place points as you follow the soft tissue profile down. In when you get past the chin. Okay, now we're going to do the upper right incisor profile, and it's helpful to move to the frontal view, so we have our positional icons in our toolbar, and we want to look at the one where the anatomy, the patient is looking straight ahead, so that would be the frontal view. We'll just left mouse click that, and then move the clipping line to the patient's right side until the software laterally bisects the right upper central incisor through the apex of the root and the middle of the crown. So I'm just going to use my scroll wheel and move that towards me until I get about midline of that tooth. And then I want to go ahead and click on the right view. And I want to place the points on the root tip, the crown, and the labial point of the crown. So if I'll, I'll take my mouse over here to the side and you can see that there is writing associated with that and what that says is root of the upper incisor so it lets you know where you need to start but I'm gonna click on the apex of the root and we can make an adjustment within the software if we would like and then we want to put it at the crown the next point and then we want to put it at the labial point of the crown Now we want to do the lower right incisor profile and we want to change to the front view. And again we want to use our scroll wheel. Go right through the mid part of the crown right to the apex. Go ahead and click on the right view. And then we're going to click on the apex of the root, the crown, and the labial point. We're finished with that. Now we're ready for the upper right molar profile. I think it's helpful to change to grayscale in this instance. We'll click on grayscale. When we do that, it doesn't automatically take us to grayscale. What you have to do is to left mouse click and hold down on your slider bar under brightness and move it just a little bit. And then we'll want to use our scroll wheel and move that until, and we drag it until the clipping control slider moves us to where we can see more of the anterior cusp of that first molar and we also should, should see a good amount of root pulp. That's a pretty good view right there and we want to mark the anterior root tip the interior cusp. And again, we can use our view, the lateral view over here, and that's helpful. And then we want to mark the posterior cusp. Now we're ready for the lower right molar profile. And we want to do the same thing that we did on the upper. Let's go ahead and use our scroll wheel maybe.
Now all tasks are finished. So we'll click OK. Now after you have completed your tracing task, you can make adjustments to any of the coordinates and profiles by entering the editing mode by opening the tracing task window. So go up to create tracing and you can double click on any of the completed tasks to re redo those tasks. So let's say Nasion, I can double click on that and it says do you want to trace it again? Yes. So just go ahead and make our tracing point and then again I'll say all tra tasks have been finished and our tracing is finished. So you can also modify completed landmark positions and profile lines. Landmark positions and profile points are highlighted in the volume in the rendering window. And you want to move your mouse cursor over the landmark or profile points. So let's go ahead and we'll just click on the right view. And you want to place and hold the left button on your mouse to drag the landmark or profile point to the desired location. You would click on the point. In this case it would be a yellow point for the profile and you drag it to the location that you want. Now we might want to go ahead and use grayscale to better see where that point needs to be. You would release it and save it to the new position. This is useful for moving landmark positions quickly and adjusting profile lines without retracing the entire feature. When you've completed your tracing task, all of your calculations are done for you. Okay, with the text view open, which it is automatically after the tracing task is complete, you have access to four tabs, landmark, measurement, reference, and analysis. To click, if you click analysis, that will turn on a wiggle gram that will show you anything that has fallen outside of the norm. When using the analysis to treatment plan or diagnose, you might want to turn off, off or on the certain individual landmark measurements and references. You may also want to turn off the entire group. How you would do that again is you can select the entire group and turn that off or you can select any of the one particular items. The first column here which is landmark. It shows you the coordinate points of the trace landmarks relative to the Nasion origin. The second measurement lets you display angle and distance measurement on the rendered volume. References allow you to turn on and off defined reference lines and planes, mid sagittal and etc. And again the analysis shows a wiggle gram of normalized data versus your measurement for a quick assessment. Based on what you see in the analysis tab, you might want to hone in on certain measurements. So if you pick on something that's pretty far in the red, say in this instance, which is soft tissue measurement, it means it's more than two standard deviations from the norm. To print the analysis, you want to turn on the teeth filter. That will give you a little better transparency. And on the toolbar, select the right view which we do have right now, the right view positional icon. We'll go ahead and close the tracing task list. And if you want the patient information to appear on the saved analysis and it is not showing up, click on the eye on the toolbar. So in this case, we do have patient information here. We also have doctor information. In this case, Dr. John Doe. If you want to change your information that appears on the screen, you can go to File, Preferences, and you can select a tag text. In this case, it's Dr. John Doe, but it could as easily be Dr. Robert Smith. So that's where you would make that change. So we'll click OK there. We want to select and make sure text view is on and deselect slice locator if that is on. In the text view go to reference and turn on Frankfurt horizontal plane and occlusal plane. Then we want to select analysis And then we want to select Printout. That'll be right next to Text View. This will resize your rendering and tracing to a one-to-one -one scale for printing. Okay, on the menu bar, select View, which would be up here at the top. Then Capture to Gallery. 
and accept the whole view and click OK. Next, select File, then Print Preview to show how the analysis will look when printed. So let's go ahead and click OK here. And then we'll click on Gallery. And 3D Analysis is what we just saved. So we want to select Print Preview, so we'll go up to File. And let's go to Print Preview. And this will show how the analysis will look when printed. Down here in the bottom, you'll notice that it says Life Size. It is saved as Life Size, and it gives you the measurements and all the other finished data, the, uh, the tracing data down here on the right side. Let's go ahead and we'll close out of here. And we will go to the bottom of the screen. And then we'll see some options here we see export all the images to a folder of your choice. So let's say that I wanted to choose a folder on the desktop. We would go ahead and click on export all images. We would designate where we would want to place those. We could save the format as either JPEG, Bitmap, PNG, TIFF, or DICOM. It's recommended to do JPEG. That would keep the image life size and then you go ahead and click OK and then it would save this image to a folder on your desktop and then you could import that say into your practice management software or your email client to send out to a maybe a consulting doctor. Now let's say that you wanted to email all images you could click on that and files are saved successfully. We'll click OK on that Okay, it pulled up my email client and it shows an attachment that was put onto my email uh, that can be sent out to uh, whoever you would like. Now, to do this, for this to work, you would have to have either my Microsoft Outlook or Mozilla Thunderbird for that to be able to effectively work. Otherwise, if you wanted to send it through email, you'd have to export all images and then attach it to an email. This concludes our Treatment Studio Cephalometric Tracing training video. Hopefully what we covered in this session will provide a solid foundation for you as you build upon your knowledge of 3D cephalometric tracing. As you use and learn the Treatment Studio 3D analysis tracing software, questions may arise that are not answered by review of this introductory video. For additional assistance, contact Imaging Sciences Customer Support at 800-205-3570. Also, if not already in your possession, you may download the Treatment Studio Reference Manual and the 3D Analysis Reference Manual by going to anatomage.com. First, select Doctor Login and then enter ISI for the username and ICAT for the password. Topics that will be covered in future Treatment Studio sessions include using the arch section and, and implant tabs for implant planning and that would include TAD placement as well, nerve canal tracing, creating multiple TMJ views, constructing panoramic type images and 2D CEPHs, how to superimpose two 3D volumes, 3D soft tissue prediction, the use of hotkeys and navigational shortcuts, and other advanced features. From all of us at ICAT, we would like to thank you for being part of our training video today.